Well, we're back and we're doing stuff with a six-wheel drive ambulance. Waddle birds agree to. Um, today we've got a, a new addition. Um, I'm distracting myself a bit. We've got ourselves a little brass monkey 22 liter fridge freezer, which is currently freezing stuff away. It's got a little ice cube tray in the back here, which I think is got ice in it now. It's running at minus 14. Um, now we want to run that off the 24 volt system because it's dual voltage. Um, this place looks like a bomb's hit it as usual because my apprentice spent more than 10 minutes in here. That cable here runs across to the old suction pump converter, which is a 12 to 24 volt converter. Um, that's a temporary arrangement to see if it's going to work. We can wander around in here with all the junk that's stuffed in here. This is the 24 to 12 volt converter that is running it, previously running a suction pump. But uh, we generally use that for all the 12 volt converters to charge our phones. We don't want to be loading that up with fridge all the time. So up the very back here, up in that back corner, there's a couple of NATO plugs or not NATO, mil spec plugs, um, of which I have a couple of connectors for. Um, so I'm going to connect it to one of them. That also means that they are disconnected by a relay when I turn the master light switch off, which will be nice. Currently I've got a little mains inverter on there, a little 150 watt one for running the fast charging gear on my phones that can't run off a 12 volt system. So, um, and I've got a bunch of cable to run all the way up through here. So, um, first order of duty though, is to get up here and find out what the polarity of those plugs is, because I've never bothered to actually check it. Um, I know the wiring behind it is reasonably thin by relative speaking, so when I first got these guys, um, and knowing that this pulls like 55 amps, this pulls about 16 amps, decided that they were probably going to be a little bit over draining for those sockets. So I ended up using a pair of Anderson plugs. And um, for the big one, we have this giant cable here. And this is what normally runs the old one. But that's aside from the point. We want to get this working. So I'm going to take my old cheapo meter up here because my good expensive one is tucked away in a locked box somewhere and we're going to see what the polarity of those is now keep in mind good camera angles are hard to get in here so might have to deal with cardboard box cam here being a little bit off I'm also leaning over that existing cable at the moment um, we're going to go with these two pins which i think are the top two we got nothing on them so let's try these two one up here, nothing on them. Let's try those two. Oh, we're over voltage. That might be the two we're looking for. Let's go up a range. Oh, doing this one handed is tricky. There's our 24 volts, and it is the right polarity. So, what pin is that? So, that would make pin A positive and pin B negative all right A and B is easy all right cool all right so we're back inside on the desk and I need to turn a few things on uh, my soldering iron included and we have our mil spec plug that I've had sitting in here for a while I ordered a couple of these um, and I need to remember exactly how they all go together um, I've got a little plug thing in here. I'm not sure what that's all about either. Um, there's another one in here. That's probably, that would be leftovers from the other plug that I have already used. So we'll keep that. This would be the assembly that I've got that I'm going to need. The solar cups on the back of that. That needs to go over the cable. Well, I'm doing this end first, so... Most of this stuff I can thread on from the other end of the cable. I don't need to worry too much. Um, normally, if I had a plug on the other end, I'd be fairly careful about that. <laughs> Especially when you're doing something like a 100 meter swing stage lead. And you're putting a three-phase plug on it. <coughs> and you forget to put the bloody shroud on. <coughs> oh. um. I'm going to cough there because it made me nervous to think of that. All right, let's, this is moderately small cable compared to what is actually intended for these plugs. So, let's see if we go. Now, what do we say? Pin A and B. So, A and B. So, 
So it's those two there and they're marked. Cool. And I think pin A was positive, but I will have to go back over my video and check. Oh, that didn't strip the way I'd hoped. It's got some good copper in it too. So let me get everything warmed up and get this prepped. All prepped. I'm going to get my extraction fan hanging around out the top here. Drop you down a bit. My apprentice is watching something funny in the background. You might hear, hear her giggling away. So pin A was positive, pin B was negative. I'm going to check this after I plug it in. Now I've bent these over a bit so that um, they hold in just with a bit of tension. Uh, because they are like about a quarter of the size that they should be. I'm going to stick this down with <coughs> some blue tack. My, <coughs> my throat is very dry. I'm probably going to need to find something to, to lubricate my throat with soon. And... Um, I think the magnetic tip in my soldering iron is stuck again. All right, we're gonna have to wait for that to warm up. All right, while we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, we're going to um, just insert these through here a bit. Now, um, I could remember which way around this goes. I think that way. All right, so A and B. Is that right? That's A. That way and then B through that side. Yep, so A and B are the ones we want. Cool. Because this is the bit we can't thread on after the fact. Yeah, one trick with um, magnetic soldering tips, sometimes they stick. Go okay, fan outlet. This fan is obnoxiously noisy. Um, I am going to replace all of that soon. So we really need to get a fair bit of solder in here and get it nice and hot. And then we'll drop everything in there um, once it's really hot. I probably even need a bigger soldering iron for this. But we'll see how we go. I might end up gas torching this one. I'll leave this sitting in here for a bit to try and heat everything up. And I've rubbed that against my leg and messed up those conductors. But too late now. We're going to deal with it. I'm not sure if this iron's going to get it hot enough, but we'll just keep it in here and see how we go. Now we're starting to drop in there. There's our flux coming out. Might be able to... Oh, two strands. <laughs> well, it's stuck in there now. So, <clears throat> alright. I'm going to feed a bit more solder in behind that and try and make it look a little bit better. Um, but we've got one in at least. So I'm much happier with this join. This is after I flowed a bit more soldering and neatened it up. I really probably would be more comfortable with a bit of heat shrink on there, but um, this little guy is going to do that job anyway. All right, so I'll get our negative in, and um, hopefully we got the polarity right, because I have a knack of forgetting this. When you guys are watching, this stuff happens pretty quick. But for me, like all sorts of distractions and lots of time happens between these clips. And uh, I'm also kind of tired, and I've got brain lesions, and I've got MS, and all the other stuff I mentioned in the other videos. So yeah, I do sometimes forget. I also had the jab a couple of days ago, and I'm only just coming back to being sort of semi-normal. So anyway, let's get this other one in. All right, got our black soldered in. I'm going to whack our little insulating rubber seal here. I think that little orange bit they include is to seal up that other pin. Um... I think that's what it's for. Not that these are going to be in a wet environment, but um, yeah, these don't exactly come with instructions. It's pretty much the case with a lot of mil spec stuff. So you sort of left guessing with stuff, and when you don't do these for a job, you tend not to really notice. Yeah, I don't know if that's what that's for, actually. This is designed to be trimmed down to length or something. I'm just going to leave that out, and uh, if I do discover what it is later on, we'll make use of it. All right, so we need our lock ring on next. Um, and I've got to make sure I've got that round the right way. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go look at the other one. I've forgotten which way around that was supposed to go. Um, I think probably because there's a lip at the back, it's meant to go that way. And that lip rests on this one. I think that's how that's meant to be. And that allows it to lock onto the plug. So, and then we've got our strain relief. So let's find the other end of our cable and thread all this on. Alright, so we've got all our bits all 
threaded down the cable here and uh, here's our tail piece now I really should have now in hindsight I probably should have left this insulated a bit longer um, just so that it hits the strain relief but we might whack some heat shrink on that let's peel the the blue tack off the pins here too while we're at it um, but yeah we'll whack some heat shrink over that now that is supposed to thread on here from memory if I can get the thread started there we go that's our strain relief and that should still be free to spin that's good okay yep that feels about right so let's get some heat shrink threaded down all this length of cable again um, heat shrink that on and then we'll put our strain relief clamps on all right i really got to get myself some cable lubricant or something that took all together too long to get these threaded down that cable there's only about six meters of the stuff i think six or ten meters so we're going to put this guy over here just to cover that transition and we're going to thread this one over the whole lot so we've got two layers of it and you're going to go into the back provide a bit of strain relief now we need mr stoner torch we have mr stoner torch and we have mr stoner torch senior um, this guy should probably do the job though for this one if it doesn't we'll use the senior job all right let's see how we go here My apprentice is really enjoying whatever show she's watching. You hear her giggling away in the background. I'm not sure how well these the GoPros pick it up. So I'm doing this on a GoPro instead of a phone today. Right. It's probably about right. While it's still soft, we just want to get it trained in a nice straight orientation. Um, no pun intended there. Try and steer away from those sort of puns if I can help it. All right. Now, stick this down and we'll find our cable clamps, which there are two screws and two clamps. And we have a little... I'm sure this is actually important. I'm pretty sure that's actually meant to go inside that plug. Um, so we might actually remove that and insert that before we get too much further in. Right, so... Um, I could probably look up how to install these, but I'm going to guess my way through. This can go in in one of two orientations. This way, there's a number of steps uh, on the back of this. These, this little lip lines up perfectly with a slot in there, and it sits nice and flush. I think that's the way it's meant to go. This way, that lip probably wouldn't really perform much of a task, so it doesn't sit as flush. So I think that's meant to do that way, and it's meant to form that plug and squeeze it in around those holes so I think that's what's meant to happen and I'm guessing this plug is meant to like trim to size so that it will seal up that hole as well but again I'm not going to bother with that bit mostly because we're not um we're not in a wet area and it's not in an orientation where water would accumulate in there so uh, if there's water accumulating in there there's a problem so yeah this will sit over the top of that that looks very much like it's meant to be the way that it goes and it also was a bit i did find it a bit interesting when i did this up that it didn't actually have a really positive stop it didn't firmly do up anywhere and i'm used to these being a little bit loose which is now the case so we do that up nice and tight that's now forming a nice tight seal in there so the walruses will be happy um anyway um Often how I see these going, yeah, one side's threaded, the other side's not. Okay, so we thread you through. Find the side here that is threaded. And we'll give that a quick twist with our fingers. Not that that's going to make a lot of difference on there. This cable's way undersized for this plug. Um, so we might just do the strain relief up so it's present. And at a later date we might put something in there. Um, actually, I have some discarded insulation here I might be able to trim a piece of that top and bottom and jam that in there and that might actually provide a bit more grip all right so we're nearly done here let's do this up the last few turns all right now we have our two bits of 
discarded insulation in there. It does actually have quite a firm grip on it now. That I'm happy about, although it's not really going to come out the way that's soldered in. Um, should be fairly robustly connected for the tiny little connection that there is. Um, Alright, so we need to go and hook this up, check our polarity, and then measure our length of cable. And crucially, we'll disconnect the power before we chop it, because uh, in a previous video, I did that and messed it up. In fact, I might put a clip in here if I can find it. That will let us... I'll give us a couple more inches. I'll give us about that. I need a bit to... Whoa! <laughs> Okay, guys, unplug it first. <laughs> so, let's not repeat that and not have to replace my Leatherman jaws again. And uh, you'll notice from my Leatherman, I now have a new set of jaws. They're black, but that's all I could find. Glad I got the rebar. I can replace those jaws. All right, let's go out and see what we can do. All right, we're back on box cam, and I've got a couple of exposed wires here, which could lead to tears, but we'll see what happens here. Actually, I've got the master interior switch up here. I can turn that off. And that should allow me to isolate these while I connect it. We'll see what's going on here. Should go on. And then I'll find a way to route these cables. Okay. Jeez, I'm outside and I can still hear my apprentice giggling her tits off. So, well, box gear moved. It is not an ideal spot for filming in here. So let's wind our multimeter up to the 200 volt range and we will stick the backlight on. We'll plonk it up here, not that you can probably see it in the background. Take a positive terminal there. Oh, I am in a really tight spot here. All right. Oh, master interior on. There we go. All right. And we have 24 volts, correct polarity. Okay, let's just swap this just to make sure I'm reading the meter correctly. That is indeed negative polarized, which is what we would expect. Okay, oh, and a bit of a tingle from my fingers on 24 volts. Because it is starting to exceed the voltage in which you can perceive it. Okay, let's go, let's go and turn off the fridge. All right, so I'm a bit new to how to operate this thing, but I think I've got to push and hold the lock button, and then I've got to push and hold the power button. That will turn it off. I think that switch will slowly de-illuminate it once it shuts everything down. Okay, now I can disconnect the plug. But before I do that, I need to measure out my cable distance. So while my master interior switch is off, I'm gonna plot out some of this cable along here where I plan to run it, cut it to length, and then I'll pull the other lead off and meet the middle ground with that. But I'll do that off camera because I don't have enough room in here to hold everything or enough blue tack to make up improvised mounts. But yeah, then we can pick this cable up out of the way. All right, let's get on with that. All right, we're back at the desk. And um, if there's one complaint I've got about uh, these fridges is they use this sort of proprietary style of plug. It's not a bad style of plug and it probably prevents you from accidentally plugging the wrong thing in. But it'd be nice to have a plug type that you could just find locally or commonplace like an anderson plug or like a mini anderson plug or something uh would make life a lot easier i wouldn't have to do this hack job of joining onto this um now i'm going to probably cut this reasonably short um only because i want to be able to use this other lead for something else um and this is going to stay pretty well in situ um, and i know that i've got most of my lead length already sorted out um from the other end. Let's make sure I'm soldering onto the right lead here. So here is our other lead, because I have a length of off cut in here as well. I'm gonna run my way all the way up to this one. And we're going to, uh, we're gonna to have to test the polarity um, of that lead as well. So that one, will prep that one in a minute. This one here, there isn't actually, it's barely noticeable how it's marked. But you will find that um, the text, I'm pretty sure it's laser etched, but it's on, there is text only on one lead. So that is pretty much the only way we're going to be able to tell which lead is what. But uh, anyway, I probably should have checked that before I chopped it. Anyway, we have the other end and we have a known polarity of connector. So uh, yeah, we'll pull this one out and we will 
trim this off and we will check the priority of that one. Let me get my beeping leads. Right, so we've got a beeping lead. Let's pick our trace lead, which I'm going to guess is probably positive. And we'll check it on our positive pin. It is. Let's try a negative. Is on that one. So it would appear that the one with the text on it is indeed our positive one. And these are combination merit lighter plugs. And they're good in some respects, but a pain in the ass in some others. So uh, anyway, now we know which one's positive. We can discard that lead. And we know that which one is positive here, that one. I'm probably going to whack a tiny little bit of heat shrink on the end of this. Um, so I know. But we'll get this guy sorted out about there. A little bit longer on that one. This feels like cheap cable, but low-grade plastic insulation. But uh, anyway, all right, let's get all our leads prepped. All right, we're going to try and get a little bit artsy-fartsy here and do a nice little inline splice. Um, this sometimes works, this sometimes looks horrible, but we want a fairly low-profile setup. And this stuff is nasty with the automatic strippers, especially the positive wire. Oh, this has got some serious copper in it. I stripped off way too much on that, but it's all right. So normally I would have left them straight and intermingled them, but I'm not quite going to go that fancy. What we're going to do here. Um, how am I going to go about this? I think we might just strip a little bit of this off again. All right. We'll clean that up in a minute. Um, prep we need to do here is we need to put our big piece of insulation over this side and gets it out of the way while we're working on stuff all right now the reason I stripped so much off here is this gives us enough length to insert these little bits of heat shrink that I prepared earlier oh. getting on over that is a pain now our wire, that is our positive wire there, we're going to start with that. We want, probably want to trim this back a bit. Take that away. Double check that is our pause. Yeah, and we're going to twist these in. There are better and more reliable ways of doing an inline splice. Um, this is my lazy method for now. Um, because they're dissimilar wire sizes and stuff. If I was going to do it right, I'd get a nice thin bit of copper and actually do a binding around the outside as well. Um, where are we? Viewfinder keeps turning off. Yeah. I want to try, this is flux core solder. And of course my soldering iron is off, so we've got to wait for that to warm up again. Alright, let's turn our outlet fan back on. And we've got some solder heat. I'm not sure if it's quite up to temperature yet. We're just going to feed some solder in here and just let it wick its way into everything. Nice and hot. It's probably way overkill for the like the 1.9 amps it's going to use at 24 volts. But um, yeah, at least that's what the manual says. I have bought a lot of so-called 12, 24 volt stuff. And it turns out to not want to work on 24 volts. Um, case in point, my uh, diesel heater <laughs> doesn't like 24 volts, even though it's listed as a 12, 24 volt unit. It doesn't blow up when you plug it into 24 volts, but it won't fire up the heating module or the glow plug. Um, probably sensibly because they're rated for 12 volts. But um, the seller on this is a trusted friend of mine, and... Um, he assures me they do actually do 12 and 24 volts, so I guess we're going to find out the hard way soon enough. Now the problem with such big grades of cable like this is when you've got them twisted, they want to unravel. So I need another blob of blue tack. Um, because when you've got one blob, you've got two blobs, so separate that up. Again, this is where the binding would help you to wrap it together. I usually use a little single strand of solid core Cat5 to do that. 
but I don't have any on hand at the exact second. So let's see if I can get that tethered down. That might work. Okay, let's get this guy in here. Again, what I do for my own personal needs and what I would do for somebody else tend to be a little different. And of course I find there's always an expert that gets into the comments that says if you're an electrical engineer you'd know this stuff. And it's the somebody with the most atrocious spelling I've ever seen. It does tend to think that maybe their thoughts on the matter could be a little bit inaccurate. And some people, yes, they do make a point. Like, you know, I've got to remove a screw before it and that could break something if I keep going. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and I probably did break it. But yeah, I'm just ranting about random stuff. I don't like doing comments in videos. I really don't. Because, you know, while well, you get a lot of good comments, there's always that one person that just spoils the whole thing for everybody. And I just... I ain't got the time for it. That's the problem with trolls like that. They just... They rely on the fact that people give up. I'm not one to give up. But at the same time... It's not socially acceptable to solve some of these problems the way that I would like to solve them. And, uh, yeah. As I've mentioned previously, I'm a little bit on the autistic spectrum, and my logical conclusions to things might solve it, but some people are like, you just can't do that. You really can't. And I don't really understand why, but it's what everybody says, so, it's, you know, I, I guess that's what the socially acceptable answer is to that problem. All right. Can we just get over that bit? No, we're going to have to just sit there. That's all right. At least as long as this bit is doubly insulated, we'll be happy. All right. It takes a little bit to nurse this heat shrink down to size. There's such a big bit of surface area on it. It will look a little wonky, but we'll press that down and train it into shape before we get too much further down here while it sets and that will be a little bit easier to handle set that down a bit all right i think we're done with the cable let's see if we can blow up the fridge all right so i brought a blob of blue tack for the box cam this time and stuck to a box with a big magnet in it it is getting a bit dark and i know gopros don't go that well at night so we'll see how we go now this is live presently <coughs> but um, in the near future I'm gonna have to turn this off before I connect it just turns the lights off but I need lights right now to see what I'm doing so this has got to be connected so many turns all right let's um We'll get some probably some cable clips and we'll clip this up around the back probably probably up and along and around here at a later date oh free blue tack right but anyway for now i'm just going to run this along the top of the bed plug it in and see if it all blows up let's chuck that down there all right so let's see let's swing our gopro across get the water bottle out of the way shuffle this across a bit and um all right, I'll plug in down the side here. You kind of can't see where it's plugging in. Oh, I forgot to turn it off, but it went beep. And it's turned on, and it hasn't blown up. Let's turn it on. I reckon it's minus five at the moment. It's not too bad. Well, okay, it's fired up and it's running, and it hasn't blown up. And it's registering 25.2 volts. That's nice, I like that. It didn't blow up. I wonder if the ice blocks worked. Uh, oh, it's got a light in here. I only just noticed that. How about that? Let's have a look in here. I filled this up earlier in the day. Some of them are starting to frozen. They're a bit mush. Others aren't quite frozen yet. So, it's not too bad. We can make ice in it. So we'll put that back in and we'll let them freeze. See how long that takes. Anyway, that's the load taken off my um, 24 to 12 volt converter. The other complaint I have about this is that it's a capacitive touch um, interface here, and you just gotta brush your arm across it or something, and it thinks you're touching it. 
um, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Fortunately, it does have an automatic lock function. And it has this USB port on here, which I don't know what that's for. I think that might be for charging stuff. But anyway, um, that'll be handy when it is. The next job for this is going to be making some cabinets that go under this, so the stuff that I used to store here can be stored underneath. Um, but for the moment, yeah, we have a fridge. Freezer. I'll figure out how to set it to fridge mode at some point. But freezer mode's good at the moment, because we're probably going to be taking frozen stuff for long trips. Not that we're going to get to do much with all this COVID lockdown stuff, but we're going to do some moderate trips, maybe for a couple of days that are not too far from home. And uh, we just want to take our stuff so we don't have to come back into town all the time. All right. I'm not sure if this is going to ed edit is going to be a long one or a short one, but um, yeah, we'll see how we go. See you in the next one. I hope it was interesting.